Good afternoon, and uh, thank you for joining us for another um, our, of our Expansion Challenge webinars. Uh, this is week 11, uh, and today we're talking about the wonderful world of advertising on e-commerce. Uh, I'm Ant, um, I'm the Head of Growth here at Global E-Commerce Experts. Um, we're here to successfully expand clients into Europe and across the globe, um, and me and my team are responsible for making sure that those expansions are done successfully. Um, I'm mega excited uh, to be joined by the team at PlayerCart. We're joined by Charlie, Jay and Emily from PlayerCart. Uh, and they're here to tell us about the way that they're revolutionising the way um, that we can advertise on um, on our e-commerce channels across the board. So thanks for joining, guys. Uh, I'll leave it over to you guys. Thank you. Uh, thanks so much for that, Ant. Yeah, so hi, everyone. I'm Emily. I'm head of sales here at Player Cart. And um, I suppose before I hand over to my colleagues, uh, I should give you a top line on what Player Cart does, who we are, um, in case you didn't know already. So Player Cart are the only company in the world who can translate any of your marketing or advertising assets on any channel to become fully transactional and data capturing. So two key pillars there on how we can support you. Um, and I'm going to show you some examples of how that works. Now, please bear in mind, this can work across any channel of marketing and advertising. But specifically, the examples I'm going to show you are in the open web, social commerce. Um, and then I'm going to hand over to Charlie. And she's going to talk to you about how a player card can be used on your site to help you sort of get into different territories uh, through our technology in, in a sort of simplified way. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen now. I think it's going to be five seconds whilst that gets loading. And then I will jump into some examples for you. Here we go. Perfect. Thank you for that confirmation. So... Um, Player Cart uh, works with uh, lots of different companies across the world, and we do operate globally. Uh, we, our technology can be applied to any industry, and I know we've got some uh, brilliant companies uh, here today with us and uh, that span a cross-section of industries. So this is translatable to all of you. Uh, one of our clients is L'Oreal, and... Uh, what we did with L'Oreal is we did an A-B test to show how the player cart technology can lift sales for them and also gather some really important data, um, both first party and some performance data. Now, um, what's really interesting as uh, any A-B test is, is, is to keep the variables the same, just one thing would change. And in this case, it was overlaying the player cart technology. So they didn't change their media strategy. They didn't change any of the assets. So I'm going to show you what that looked like uh, before player cart was introduced to the mix. So if you imagine I'm uh, young enough to be on the Cosmo website and um, I'm one of their target audiences and I scroll down this page here and I come across an advert here from L'Oreal Paris. They've obviously spent a lot of money in here getting Eva Longoria involved. Um, and what was happening prior to player cart being uh, used were, were they were getting a lot of engagement from the ads. So, you know, the media agency saying, yes, this is great. This is a success because we're getting a lot of people interacting with the ad unit. But what was happening at this point is uh, consumers were getting redirected as they do in any shoppable solution currently to a third party website to purchase that product. Now, um, roughly 98.5% of people at this point drop off because they don't want to be removed from the publisher or the place on the internet where they uh, currently were. And um, of those 1.5% of people that engaged and carried on being engaged with that purchase funnel, um, less than 1% actually converted into a sale. Now, when the player cart solution was uh, added to, to the solution, um, what happened is, is we enabled uh, all their consumers to shop within the ad unit, just like this. 
Now, what you're seeing here is a technology overlaid onto the marketing assets in the open web. Um, everything you see is completely customizable to you, your consumer's needs, the brand. Uh, but for particularly beauty, uh, it's really important to have the reviews there. Um, so what happened now is sales jumped up by over 10%. I'm not allowed to share the exact figures, of course, um, but that is a huge, huge uplift in sales. And I'm going to show you why those uh, sales exercised like that. So um, as you click through to buy now, and this is the moment of intent, you are able to auto populate your details as a consumer and around 87% of people have these details stored in their cash. So this process becomes super easy. Um, and a as a consumer, I must agree with the terms and conditions and the data usage policy owned by the brand and fulfillment partner. And this now enables player cart to track first party data for you and uh, we don't own that, that is not ours. So it's all legal and consented. Um, and we are also able to track performance uh, data. So the events and how your consumers are interacting within this interface. And then we can pull through our address here, pop in the card details and voila. Uh, I've purchased the product as, and I can carry on reading uh, this article here on the Cosmo website. So in an open web environment, it can take anywhere between uh, sort of 10 to 15 seconds to purchase a product from the ad unit. And uh, just to show you here, it, it isn't just restricted to videos. The player cart tech can be overlaid onto anything. And just in the way L'Oreal did, you don't have to change your uh, media strategy or your marketing plan at all. Um, and one thing I wanted to mention about what's on screen now is actually, this here is a Vodafone campaign that Player Cart supported with Gum Gum. And what you can do here is just pop in some of your data. So the call to action is different. It doesn't always have to be sales led. It could be data capture. It could be getting someone to enter a competition so it's very very flexible to your needs as a brand i won't take you through the whole process again but what i will do now is move away from the open web into a social commerce environment now player carts technology can be applied to any social media channel and the execution so the customer experience is the same in every social media channel which uh, expedites you building the trust with your audience. Typically, uh, on average, it can take over six months to build uh, the trust to get consumers to shop in these different platforms. With Player Cart, that doesn't happen. You also don't have to set up a shop on the social commerce channels, and you don't have to give any commission uh, of your sales to us. It's very, very simple. But on top of that, just like we did in the open web, we shorten that purchase journey for the consumer. So what you're seeing here on the screen now is typically um, the journey that a consumer has to go on now when they want to shop in the social commerce environment. Um, and right at this point, they get the option to purchase the product, but they have to then jump out of the social media environment. Now at this point you lose data and uh, you can't understand how your consumer's behaving but uh, also you're gonna get more drop-offs and drop-offs. And sometimes uh, consumers have to jump to five different screens before they can even purchase the product. With Player Cart, what you're seeing here is a demo of something that we've done with uh, Corona, so a B and Bev. Um, and you can see now from what I'm about to show you how simple it is for the consumer to purchase within the environment. So if I click on Shop Now, you'll see an overlay comes on top. But crucially, your consumers are still within that social media uh, environment, in this case, Meta. Um, and now I'm going to show you what that purchase journey can look like for them. You click Buy Now, you pop in your details. And if, if you're set up for it, we can add Apple Pay, Google Pay, Meta Pay, whatever you might need it to be. So um, it can go down to a simple, like, click on the side of the phone and buy the product. Really, really easy. Um, you can see they have to agree with the terms and conditions and data usage just in the same way as they did before. And you go through, again, pop in your address and your card details. And then uh, you've got some nice beer on the way to you. 
So um, what you can do here, and this is actually quite crucial, I think, to some of uh, some of the people we have here today, is you can visit uh, the product on the actual website. Uh, and in this case, it's a retailer called Beerhawk that Corona is working with. So we can support you in getting those people onto your sites as well. Um, and Charlie will speak to you about that in just a moment. There's one more thing I was going to show you. I mentioned at the beginning, player cart technology is applicable to any of your marketing assets. Um, what I'm showing you is digital, but it can translate to out of home as well and in-person events. But um, one of the great things is it can be used in live streaming, also webinars and virtual events. And this is something here, it's a demo by Maybelline, and I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So this here is a live stream, it's a promoted ad. You can click on it, and then you can... Okay, well, all right, guys, so now if you're ready to see the, the demo, me applying it on my lashes, let's go. Usually, I like to start with my bottom lashes just because I like to do... And then here you can see an example of the Apple Pay. Um, so very, very simple, very, very quick. Um, that is a quick overview that I've given you. Um, looking forward to hearing some of your questions come through. Please do feel free to ask anything. Um, and... Uh, if there's no more questions, um, I will then pass over to Charlie. But for now, I'm just going to stop sharing my screen and then hand back to Anne just in case there are questions. No, that's mega cool. Thank you very much. Um, I think what we'll do is we'll collate the questions as they come in um, and we'll do them at the end. I can see there are a few coming in, so we'll just go through those and, and pull out the best few um, and we'll go through those at the end. Um, but yeah, it, it, you know, it's, it's mega cool. Um, it looks as if like, you know, you're just kind of really shortening that kind of customer journey, making that uh, purchase decision a lot easier. Um, so, you know, it's a kind of win-win for anyone using it. Um, yeah. Absolutely. And in social commerce, um, consumers have been known to purchase a product in under five seconds. And one of our one of our clients said, oh, my goodness, this is dangerously easy. In yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll hand over to Charlie now. Thanks, Emily. Yeah. And just key to note that it's all customizable. So the buying journey, if you had a more um, intricate product that needed a little bit more explanation, we can put that detail in there as well. Um, so I'm Charlie, I work at Playercart, I'm the commercial retail director here, which means I get to look after fulfillment partners like the lovely global e-commerce experts, um, so thanks Anne for welcoming us today. Um, outside of using the tech on your advertising, um, there's other ways that you can make the most out of this. Um, so I'll just share my screen and I'll show an example um, that we've put together for a brand enabling checkout on their website through our tech too. Oh, no, that's not what I wanted to share. So let me try that again. I love tech issues from a uh, uh, tech company. Yeah. Always. Sorry. Can you see my right. screen now? Is that? Yes. Yes. The old um, study break? Yes, that is what you should be seeing. So this is a brand and quite a well-known brand that today doesn't actually have a checkout option on their website. So if I just take you through what that journey looks like today. So you've come to the website, you've had a look through the products, you've chosen a deal through having a little look um, and you go on to try and buy the product. Um, but actually what you're faced with, you've made the buying decision already and you're faced with where to buy rather than a quick checkout experience. So in this example, um, this is a Roku streaming stick. As you can see here, there's a few buying options. Not all of them are open today. They're at varying price points. Um, so Amazon being the cheapest, naturally, as a bargain hunter, you would go off to Amazon. So you've now left the brand website so there's no chance for you to go and shop the rest of the brand's products but you're now also faced with amazon and we know it's a beast that we all have to contend with but actually when we're trying to grow our brand awareness you're now faced with brand competitors products so the customer that was on your website made a decision to purchase that product is now faced with oh what about this google chromecast have i considered a fire stick in amazon own product interrupting the journey even further for the consumer and might be redirecting the customer that's decided to buy off to a competitive product, all from not enabling a checkout experience on the website itself. 
So we've put together um, what this tech could look like for Roku or a similar brand that doesn't enable a checkout experience on their page. So rather than it being sent off elsewhere, the customer's made the buying decision, they've chosen their product based on all the information available, they want to buy it now, hence buy now. So overlaying our tech makes that journey much, much simpler. You're not being retargeted by competitor products. Um, and you can, again, in Emily's examples, this data is, tends to be cached by the customers. And this is the same journey. Um, can be made slightly shorter with the Apple Pay and Google Pay options. But you know the drill. And now that customer has now stayed within the website, made that purchase, and now that customer data can actually go to the brand for them to retarget that, that customer later, whether they're bringing out a new product or they're running deals or they've got something that's complementary to that product, they can retarget them later in order for them to purchase. Um, and just to call out in this final screen of here is that you can choose who the product is shipped with. So in the UK, whether that be global e-commerce experts, and if you're a brand that's traditionally in the US or another part of the world, um, we can work with many fulfillment partners. We've got very simple API integration. We do 90% of the work, but a lot of the kind of um, CRM systems, ERP systems, we're already plugged into. So it's only a couple of days work from us from an integration point of view to get you up and running. Are there any questions? Thank you for that, Charlie. That was awesome. Um, so, yeah, again, there are a few questions coming in. We'll keep them to the end um, and we'll kind of go through them one by one. Um, gives us a chance to kind of pull out the best, pull out the best ones. So, um, yeah, thanks for that. So essentially, it just kind of looks as if it's like a, almost like a like a mobile buy box. Um, you can you can pretty much chuck it on anywhere. But most importantly, I think what I got from that is that it's not only the quick customer journey that, that you know that's going to influence that buying decision but also the customer data capture as well um you know when you're when you're on other uh, marketplaces and directing your um traffic away from your website you're not going to capture that data so you can i guess you can use that to um to retarget as you mentioned so thank you very much for that. that was really uh really cool um great uh i'm assuming jay's up next yeah, so um, Jay, if you want to maybe just talk a little bit about um, how we can support uh, the, the brands here um, that are sort of like more to C2C or going into different territories with their, their marketing, how we're very consultative, um, how we can support them on the website and in the other channels and how we can work with their sort of agency as well. Um, I think that if you speak around a little about, bit about that, then uh, we can then show the wholesome end-to-end -end player cart journey. I can find the unmute button. Hi, I'm Jay. I'm Business Development Director over here at Player Card. And interestingly, I've come from um, another shoppable provider. So when Emily and Charlie were mentioning about the current solutions in the marketplace, are pulling through what's front end of the retailer, which is great for the consumer to see. But as you saw, it can be a really lengthy journey for them to then pick which retailer and you've seen that you can you know lose them so i'm really excited to be on board at player cart um, the way that we actually work with brands their agencies retail partners um, and also other tech providers is very simple a tech to market is always to support and bolt onto what that existing media plan is so if you have worked with your agency to put together a media plan that spans across social high impact display um internal teams that are delivering out of a dsp um you know your standard iab type formats that's great we're never going to tell you which audience to target we're never going to tell you to change your creatives we will guide you around things like as you saw on the l'oreal example having a purchase-led call to action to encourage that shoppable journey um, but we're never going to say don't do it like this. Our tech simply overlays on top of that. So your media agencies have got that confidence that we are not going to make their lives harder. In fact, it actually makes their lives easier because um, the insights that you gain out of, you know, everyone clicking on the ad, understanding their behavioral as well as the first party data gets more and more valuable over time. And then what happens is your agency can make better planning decisions around where budget should be going is it a certain creative that 
drove the more um, you know conversion rates? Or was there an audience that you targeted? Was it meta platform or was it your standard IAB formats? Um, so we will definitely support them from the very start of the process. And I think that's really key um, because we want everyone to be part of that journey as opposed to demanding them to activate something. So we're very much there to hold hands. Um, we have a customer success team as well that will work with them once the campaign is actually live. Um, so you've got the ability to actually optimize in flight, whether that's optimizations to the actual media plan, but also optimizations to our touch point. You know, not every tech is perfect. And, you, you know, we might choose one image that maybe doesn't drive as much engagement. And we're there to make those amends for you to ensure that every campaign has got great learnings and outcomes and hitting the KPIs that we set up front. With regards to tech partners, we're also working with, as Emily showed you, an example from Gum Gum, other media owners that may have their own inventory, so networks that have got their own niche, um, high impact formats. Um, they often don't get served out of a DSP, um, and we're working with those to also integrate our formats too. Um, it's really successful approach because what it then means is that the agency can deliver the stuff out of their DSP or across Meta, and all the high impact stuff that's already been planned in is then driving either that data capture or that ability to drive a sale at the end of the day. So we can pretty much span across everything um, and we'll always take you know, the brand's lead in how they want to deliver out that plan. Um, it's pretty straightforward and hopefully that sort of summarized everything. And you know, I'm happy to take any questions around how that would look in a sort of longer term partnership. Great, thank you, Jay. And um, just to then summarize, uh, going back to the beginning and the message at the beginning, Player Cart is the only company in the world that offers transactional technology from any of your marketing assets. And also uh, that can be then extended onto your website. We own the global IP rights to that tech. Um, and the, the crucial difference between us and other shoppable solutions is that they're shoppable and we're transactional. And we will never, ever ask your customers to get redirected away from that purchase funnel right there and then. Perfect. What a, um, a brilliant overview. Thank you guys for, uh, for, for going through that in such detail. Um, I know that um, we're global e-commerce experts and mega excited to work alongside you guys and to see where um you know we can kind of drive your um drive your software and you know and, and use it to help our clients um successfully uh, expand across europe and the globe so um thank you thank you again for going through that in such detail that was awesome um we do have some questions uh, good news um so let's go with uh, tom uh, tom is asking how easy is this to implement um, so I think we talked about um, the, you know, the integration and stuff like that, but, um, you know, start to finish kind of like how easy is it for, for, for brands to kind of get on board with this and, and get going quickly? That is such a good question. It's really, really simple. So there's two sides to it. Um, the first question we'll ask from a tech point of view is uh, what, what platform are you already using? Um, it might be that we're already integrated with the e-commerce uh, platform and the payment systems. So that's already done. And then it's a simple, simple conversation. Um, what uh, is what's the brand asset we need the brand guidelines the creative and our customer success team will put together a checkout for you we'll work with you to make sure that that is exactly on brand and message then it's ready to go um if you haven't already uh got a platform that we're integrated with as charlie mentioned earlier we integrate normally through a simple uh, api connection and that's live so we're able to track those um live uh, skew and stock levels um and we can also sort of be flexible and change throughout the campaign around products um but we just do that simple api integration and that can take anywhere from sort of like five to ten business days on our side and about one to two hour time uh two, two hours of time from your dev team perfect thank you for that emily um okay greg's been in touch uh thanks for tuning in, greg um what's the average sales increase from using your software so i'm assuming um it's more of a conversion increase that we're that we're kind of going for here um so yeah i think you sort of touched on it lightly i know you can't give um specifics but uh do, do you guys have like an average that you could expect to see um you know using your software versus not using it 
um, I will take that question again. Uh, so, thanks for that one, Greg. Um, now, benchmarks is obviously a question that comes up uh, from all of our clients. Now, crucially, we we experience different benchmarks in different channels. I mentioned in social commerce, you know, it's, it's building the trust with uh, with your consumers, and that's expedited through using Player Cup. In open web, it's different again. So it really does depend on the product um, and the vertical and uh, the channel. Uh, on top of that, there are other variables to consider. So um, the the media assets and things like that. So it's not a one stop answer, but it's something that we can explore with you. And um, I'm personally working with one of the world's largest uh, drinks brands and um, the, the whole sort of part of our, our engagement with them is not just to help drive sales, but it's to gather data so that we can um, really home in on uh, the specifics around them and the way they're sort of uh, advertising and their particular products and working off their benchmarks already. So um, my advice would be we'd love a follow up call with you uh, to deep dive into that a bit more. Perfect. Thank you. And I guess, um, you know, as you mentioned, there are so many benefits to the um, to using the software that it's difficult to kind of, you know, find one key benefit. As you said, you know, data capture is really important as well. Um, so, yeah, perfect. Thank you. Uh, Sharon um, has also been in touch. Um, what channel does, uh, does the software seem to work best on? Um, again, this might be a bit of a <laughs> bit of an open-ended question, but um, uh, yeah, do you, do, you, do you kind of have any kind of data to show, you know, wh where the software seems to be most successful? Jay, would you like to take that one? Yeah. Okay. I'll go on. In terms of channels, often it depends on how the media plan's been put together by the agency. So first off, there's lots of variables when a plan goes together. Is it simply low CPM inventory that you just need to deliver out of your DSP to hit certain benchmarks? It could be reach, it could be viewability and so forth. You then have got your specific audience data targeting and then you've got multiple creatives. So first of all, it's quite difficult for us to see what's the best because comparing two different agencies and two different strategies is not it's like comparing apples and oranges um however i will say that what we see as the best strategy is the agencies and the clients that work closely with us so that's not us saying social is better than open web because they can both perform as successfully as each other it's where we've got smooth messaging from the start that's purchase led we've got strong purchase led call to actions with really engaging creatives um, and we've got an agency and client that's open-minded to make changes if we're seeing things aren't being pushed through the funnel. So you can get the same results, either open web, live stream, influencers. We're doing a lot of influencer work as well. Um, we just work with you to make those tweaks to ensure each of them are performing across the board. Um, you know, and as I said before, the real benefit is that you can deliver our solution across every part of the media plan. And once you start doing that over time, our value is increasing to you. Um, and then it won't matter where you're running it. And the agency knows exactly what they're doing. We know what works for that brand um, and everyone's happy. Perfect. I can see yeah. we're at time. And I just wanted to add, just in case anyone is here watching and um, they think, oh, we don't have a big media agency and a big plan. That's absolutely fine too. And we even work with some customers just to enhance their organic posting on social media and that kind of thing. So we can support everybody essentially, um, no matter what size of business you're at. Awesome, thank you. I know we are pushed for time. There is one more question that's come through that I've got to ask. This is an absolute corker. Um, Fr Frankie's come through with this. What are your aspirations for the software and how do you see it developing in the future? That's like an interview question, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> um, but no, I think it's, you know, it's, it's a good question to see kind of how you see this kind of software developing and where you see it going. Yeah, it's such a great question, Frankie. Um, and the quick answer is, um, we'll probably have to have a one-to-one -one conversation about that because, um, like it, like I said, it's very sort of innovative at the moment, and we're working with a lot of uh, companies who who want to sort of 
go into that innovation space and move forward. So how the product's changing over time um, is something we can chat to you about uh, and, and see if you've got any specific requirements uh, around that too. Perfect. Well, um, thank you guys for coming on. Um, it's been a, it's been brilliant listening to, uh, to listening to, to all the information you've got about your software. It sounds mega exciting. As I said before, we can't wait to, uh, to get going with you guys and see how, um, you know, your software can help our clients grow. Um, massively uh, appreciate you coming on and spending time talking to us um and yeah if anybody wants to get in touch we'll put all of our contact details in the comments so please feel free to reach out uh, with any questions that we didn't have time to answer um yep yeah, thanks again to the guys from player cart um that's it from us um don't forget to join us next week uh, week 12 is all about account health checks um so make sure you tune in for that um but for now um thanks again to the guys at player cart and we'll see you next time